do I place implants into infected sites? Well, absolutely. About 95% of all my implants are going into an infected site. Almost every implant I place is going into a tooth that's coming out because it's sick. <laughs> I don't place implants in healthy teeth locations. <laughs> Otherwise, the healthy tooth needs to stay, right? I mean, we wouldn't be replacing healthy teeth. So the vast proponents of my business is taking out infected teeth and placing dental implants. Now, the interesting thing is, is that we had this debate about two decades ago. Uh, and it was settled about two decades ago with some science where some people were doing, uh, going into fresh extraction sockets and had similar outcomes to non-infected sites. Now, I don't have any problems going into an infected site. And it, so the protocol goes like this. We take out the infected tooth. We curatize the location, get out any sort of granulation tissue or, or cysts or anything else that remains behind. We irrigate with normal saline solution. The solution to pollution is dilution. So we irrigate quite a month, quite a bit, and we get copious irrigation. So it's nice and clean, and we place the implant. Now, the body will heal from the insult within a couple of days. Remember when we, when we were in dental school and we learned about root canal therapy. And what the, what the endodontist would tell us and teach us is that when you take out the source of the infection, the body heals. So when you take out the, the canal and, and the infection inside the tooth, within a few days, the, the body heals. Well, it's the same thing if you take the entire tooth out. It's the exact same philosophy. If you take the source of the infection, which is the tooth out, the body will heal within a few days. Now, the bone in the surrounding area has been insulted, right? And it's got, it's got some results of that. So there can be some demineralization. There can be extra white blood cells in the area. Macrophages can be in the area. All of these exciter fe uh, functions can be in there, right? But those don't seem to care. And in fact, they may even be beneficial to the healing because there's already in a site that's excited. And then you take out the source of the infection and you clean it really well, place a dental implant and the body heals. The second thing is, is that the reason why I do so many immediate, ex immediate extractions and then dental implants is because of the theory that if you place an implant into a fresh extraction socket, you get a good outcome, if not a better outcome. And what we mean by that is we want to maintain, not regain the hard and soft tissue. When you take out a tooth and you do nothing, there's a tendency for the hard and soft tissue to collapse significantly, right? The literature is very clear on that. If you take out a tooth and you do a graft, it will collapse less. But if you take out a tooth and you place a dental implant and you graft at the same time, and then you do a socket seal with a provisional or a non-functional non provisional or a custom abutment, you get the best outcome. You maintain the most bone and you maintain the most soft tissue. And if you've ever had a case collapse on you, and we all have, and you try to recover from that, we know just how hard that can be. Okay, it's a lot of appointments. It's a lot of hand-holding. By the time you're done, you're sending that patient a, a holiday card, right? Because they're, they're part of the family now. Because they're in the office the entire year, okay? So it takes a lot of time. So in order to be more efficient and to have patients have a better outcome and a shorter project time, if you can take out a sick tooth, clean it out, and get an implant in right away, that's the way to go. Now, how are you going to do that? Well, my suggestion is you might want to check the five-thread guideline. Okay, because the five thread guideline will predict your primary stability because you don't want to be going into fresh extraction sockets that are also demineralized and then have a failure upon trying to get it to integrate the day of. You don't have any primary stability that the, the implant's loose because it doesn't look good in the eyes of the patient. Right. They said you said you could do this and now you can't do this. And now you're trying to dig yourself out of that that position with them trying to tell them, well, you know, sometimes these things happen. Right. And it doesn't look good. So you want to be more predictive, and the best way to do that is to check out our video on uh, the five-thread guideline, and that will really help you in terms of predicting primary stability, especially going into fresh extraction sockets. This has been another episode of Implants Made Simple. I'm Dr. Robert Stanley, the Smile Engineer, helping you re-engineer your practice every day.